In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to get DOSBox up and running on your project Eris build, as well as show you guys how to properly launch your DOS games through Emulation Station into the standalone emulator. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, I do want to say thank you guys for checking out the video. I hope this helps. If you are new to the channel, please consider going down and subscribing to the channel. It makes a big difference and really helps the channel grow, which then in turn helps me provide you guys with some really good content. But let's go ahead and get this thing up and running. Now, DOSBox is one of those add-ons that people have been asking me about since it became available. And to be honest, there was a couple bugs with it and some problems in terms of getting things set up. That being said, any of the major issues were tweaked and fixed a little while ago. I just hadn't had a chance to put this video together. Now in this video, I'm going to cover both getting the standalone emulator up and running, as well as getting your games loaded up in emulation station. And when you click to launch them, they launch directly into the game, but not through the RetroArch core. The reason that we want to do that is because the standalone emulator performs much better than the RetroArch core. We need to actually download two different mods. The first mod is going to be just on the Project Eris Mod My Classic website where they have all of their other mods. We need to scroll down and look for uh, DOSBox, which is right over here. It's DOSBox underscore 0.7. Point four. We're going to click and download that. Now I've already pre-downloaded them. They're on my desktop, but obviously you guys haven't. So you'll need to click and download this. And the next thing that we need to grab is actually another mod that was created by DNA 64. So I do want to give a huge shout out to him. He did incredible work. He actually walked me through this entire process because we were having a couple of issues and he fixed them right on the spot for me. He's really awesome. I know that I don't speak for myself when I say that everyone appreciates what you're doing for the community. Now, in terms of what this does, this is a mod that allows the standalone DOS box released by Mod My Classic to launch via Emulation Station. So we're going to scroll on down, and all we need to do is grab the mod itself. We click on this, it'll download. And that's pretty much it. We've got the two mods that we need. Next, we can go ahead and get rid of our web browser. And as you can see, I've got my two files right on the desktop here. Now we need obviously our USB drive plugged into our computer. Mine is already there. And we need to load up these two mods into the proper folder. We're gonna go into the Project Eris folder, then the Mods folder, and we're just gonna quickly drag and drop them in. Now these are very small mods. They don't take very much time to install. What you'll need to do is grab your USB drive, pop it into the PlayStation Classic, and as you can see on screen, it's going to go ahead and install them and run them pretty quickly. Once that's done, you are then going to need to grab your USB drive, take it out of the PlayStation Classic, and back into your computer. Okay, now that our USB drive is plugged back into our PC, we're gonna go ahead and start by loading up some of the games. Now, because we want these games to be available both in the DOSBox standalone emulator, as well as through Emulation Station, we actually have to put them into the ROMs folder where all the other Emulation Station games are. So we're gonna double click on that, and then we're gonna scroll down and look for the DOSBox ES folder. Now, this folder won't exist until you've installed the mod. If you haven't installed the mod, you are not gonna see this folder here. So we're gonna double click on that folder and this is where we're gonna drag and drop all of our games. Now I have four games that I'm gonna throw on here just as a demo. I've got Jazz Jackrabbit, Chips Challenge, Hocus Pocus, and Rodent's Revenge. Now before we do that, we do have to modify the games in a slight way. So if we jump into, for example, Chips Challenge, I'm gonna open up this folder. You're gonna see everything is in uppercase, including the file extension. The name of the folder is not important and the name of the file is not important, but the extension is very important. As you can see, the very first line item is blip2.wave and it's all in capitals. The way that DNA has coded Emulation Station to recognize the game is by the extension. So what we need to do is actually change it from uppercase to lowercase. And it's important to note that the only file in this folder that should have a lowercase extension is the executable file. So for example, chips.exe is the application file that you would double click to launch the game. That is the only one that we want to be in lowercase. So what we need to do is find the actual application for this game. In this case, you can see it says that the file type is an application. It says chips.exe. We have to click on this. We're gonna go ahead and rename it 
to chips, we're gonna leave that exactly the same. And instead of having a capital EXE, we're gonna go ahead and make this a lowercase EXE and we're gonna hit enter. As you can see now, the application is the only thing with a lowercase extension. This game should run properly now in Emulation Station and be visible. Now that being said, if you end up with a game where all the files are in lowercase, you have to convert them all to uppercase. And to give you guys an example of that, I'm going to go ahead and close this folder and we're gonna open up Rodent's Revenge because I know this is one that has all lowercase. So again, the name itself doesn't matter. It can be uppercase, lowercase, but the extension does matter. In this case, we've got .ddl files throughout and we've got an HLP file. Those characters need to be capitalized. Otherwise, it's going to look at all these files and it's going to get confused. It's not going to run properly and it's certainly not going to look clean on emulation station. So we're going to go ahead and manually adjust those. We're going to delete the lowercase letters and we're going to put in the uppercase letters and we're going to hit enter. Now, there is a bug in Windows, depending on which version you are using, that may actually prevent you from doing this. So if you try to type it in uh, all capitals and it doesn't actually stick with all capitals and it ends up going back into lowercase, the solution to fix that is to actually change the file type. So for example, in this case, you would put just like an extra L in there. So it'd be DLLL -L -L, and then you'll hit enter and then you would go ahead and change this back. You would remove this and then put in DLL all caps and enter and it'll say, hey, do you want to change the file extension? We say yes and it'll save. Now, in my case, it does seem to be working properly, but in the event that you run into that glitch, that's how you would fix it. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the rest of the files and I'll be back in a quick second. Okay, so here we are. All of our files now are capitalized in terms of their extension. The only thing that is still lowercase is going to be the application file itself, so we can close that. So now we've got Chips Challenge done and we've got Rodents Revenge. We wanna do the same with Hocus Pocus and with Jazz Jackrabbit. So if I open up Hocus Pocus, and we take a look, we are going to look for the application, which should be called hocus.exe, which is right here. Now, also you should consider that not all DOS files are running on an exe file. They may be bat files or something different, so just keep that in mind. Now, in this case, it is an exe file. We're gonna go ahead and remove the exe and make it lowercase. I'm gonna hit enter. And now you can see hocus.exe is lowercase and everything else in the folder is uppercase. So we are good in terms of Hocus Pocus. We're gonna repeat the same process for Jazz CD. Now we're good to go. All that's left for us to do is to go ahead and grab those games and dump them into this folder. Now each game is going to be within its own folder. That's totally fine. That's actually how we want this to be transferred in. Now I'm just gonna quickly skip over this transfer. Okay, our transfer is complete. We've got our four games here. And just to double check, if we open up Rodents Revenge, everything is capitalized in terms of the extension except for the application itself. And that should be the case for all of the games that we load up. Now we aren't quite done yet. There is still a configuration file we need to change because we want to tell DOSBox where to look to find the games and which drive and folder we want to mount. So we need to go back to the root of our USB drive. Then we need to go into Project Iris. Then we need to go into ETC. Then we need to go back into Project Iris. We're gonna go into SUP, our launchers folder, and then we are going to look for our DOSBox folder. So we're gonna go ahead and grab that. And then we need to jump into our application folder. Now, hypothetically speaking, if you weren't trying to launch these through Emulation Station, this is actually where you would have transferred your games. And because of that, you wouldn't actually need to edit any of the extensions or anything. You would just dump them in here. The problem with them being in here is that Emulation Station has no idea where to look for them. So you can't actually pull them into Emulation Station to run that way. But while we're here, you're gonna see that there should be a configuration file called DOSBox underscore auto EXEC. We need to right click on this and you're gonna to wanna to open this in Notepad++. If you don't have Notepad++, it's a free download. It's a must have in my opinion and certainly something that you guys should download before you do this. I'll leave links in the description down below. So we're gonna edit within Notepad++. Notepad++ is going to open up and it's gonna say, hey, we want to mount the games from folder media slash project Eris, blah, blah, blah. And it goes all the way down into your application folder. This is not what we actually want to do. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of everything here except for the forward slash media. And then we're gonna type in this new pathway. So it should say forward slash media, forward slash ROMs, forward slash, and then DOS box ES. And then we're gonna finish that off with a forward slash. And if you recall, that is exactly where we put all of our games. 
So that's pretty much it once you've made this change right over here. And I will provide this in the description down below just in case you guys want to take a peek at it to make sure that you've typed it correctly. Then we just have to save this configuration file. Once we hit save, we can go ahead and close this window and we can get rid of it. Now we're actually good to go. All that's really left for us to do, pop our USB drive into our PlayStation Classic and get this tested out. All right, so here we are on the boot menu. And before we go into Emulation Station, what I do wanna do is test out the DOSBox standalone emulator to make sure that it is functioning properly. So the first thing that we're gonna do is quickly jump into Project Iris. Okay, so now that we're in here, we're just gonna go ahead and navigate over to our DOSBox icon, which is actually going to be in the D section. Here it is. And it's important to note that you're gonna need a mouse and a keyboard for most of this. There aren't any controller configurations out of the box that are working with it. Now there are configuration files you can grab and you can map them, but it does get a little bit more complicated. So my recommendation is to make sure that you've got a mouse and keyboard connected into your OTG adapter or into your USB hub if that's what you are using. So we're gonna go ahead and jump on into DOSBox and we're gonna press our X button. Okay, so now we've got DOSBox SVN up and running. And as you can see, it does say Drive C is mounted as local directory media slash ROM slash DOSBox ES. That's exactly what we want to see. If we accidentally did a typo or we put in the wrong directory, we would have gotten an error there. So it is good to know that we are in the right place. Now, as you can see, we are in almost like a command prompt or a terminal type of screen. We are gonna have to use commands in order to locate all of our games. First thing that we're gonna go ahead and do is type dir forward slash w. And what that's going to do is it's gonna list any of the folders or files that are located within our current folder. So as you can see, we've got chips, hocus, jazz, and rodent. What we wanna do is select one of those games and we're gonna jump into that folder. In order to do that, we need to use the command cd, which means change directory. So we're gonna go ahead and cd into hocus pocus. And then we're gonna type Hocus, H-O-C. And once you start spelling it, you actually don't have to continue to type the entire folder name. If you press the tab button, it'll find any of the folders that match what you've typed so far, and it'll display it. So as you can see, it says CD Hocus underscore whatever. That's totally fine. We're gonna hit enter. Now we're in the Hocus Pocus folder. As you can see, the directory has changed. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go D-I-R forward slash W. And now it's gonna show us all of the game files and the extensions and anything that's inside of that folder. We need to locate our executable, which would be the hocus.exe. And then all we need to do to launch it is type in hocus.exe. So once we've typed it and we hit enter, it's actually gonna go ahead and start launching this game. So it's gonna tell us to press any key. We're gonna go ahead and do that. It's gonna fade away. And now Hocus Pocus is going to start running. And there it is. Now we're gonna go ahead and press any key to continue. Now this is obviously working, but before I go ahead and switch over to Emulation Station, what I do want to do is show you guys how to exit DOSBox. So what we need to do is go ahead and scroll on down to quit and return to DOS. Once we're here, you're gonna see obviously we have our command line again at the bottom, and it's really simple. All we have to do is type exit, and then hit enter and it's gonna take us back into our main carousel. Okay, so here we are, we are back and we've exited out of DOSBox. So we do know that the standalone emulator is running and functioning properly. Now what I wanna do is show you guys that emulation station is working. So we're gonna go back to our boot menu. Then we're gonna go over to our emulation station, which is right over here. We're gonna hit X. And now that emulation station is running, what we should see is that there is some sort of a PC icon or something along those lines. As you can see, we do have an IBM icon and there are four games available. So when we click on that, you're gonna see that we have Chips Challenge, Hocus Pocus, Jazz Jackrabbit and Rodent's Revenge. Now, obviously this doesn't look super great. And if you're like me, you're gonna wanna try to scrape these. Now, not all games can be scraped. I have tried scraping a few of these in the past and some of them don't scrape well. So you may have to manually add images and things like that to it, but we can certainly scrape if we're connected to the network for some games. For example, if we go ahead and hover over Chips Challenge and we hit the select button, scroll down to edit this game's metadata, and then go down to scrape all the way at the bottom, it's gonna go ahead and try to do that. It's found Chips Challenge. We're gonna go ahead and select that. Then we're gonna save. And now if we go back, you're gonna see that we do have the artwork for Chips Challenge. Additionally, if we wanna do the same thing for Jazz Jackrabbit, I don't know if this will work. We're gonna go ahead and try. Go down to scrape. 
It's going to try to take a look. It did find Jazz Jacker of it, so we're good. We can grab that. We can save it. We can go back. And as you can see, the Jazz Jack Rabbit artwork and metadata does display. Now, like I said, some games don't scrape well. So if we try to look for Hocus Pocus, I think this is one of the ones that I can't get artwork for and it doesn't work. We may have to do this manually, which is totally fine. But be prepared that some games are not going to scrape well. And all that's really left for us to do here is to test to see if any of these games are running. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and launch up Jazz Jack Rabbit because we saw Hocus Pocus running fine. Let's go ahead and see if we can get Jazz up and running too. And there you guys have it. Jazz Jack Rabbit is up and running and functioning properly. To exit the game, just go down to your exit game option. And then once you enter it, it'll automatically exit back into Emulation Station. Now I do want to mention some DOS games require a specific uh, keyboard command. It might be Control Alt Delete. It might be Alt F10 or Control Alt F10. And I'm going to leave a few of those examples in the description down below. So if you end up getting stuck in a game, you may have to use a specific keyboard command in order to exit it. But that's actually pretty much all I've got for you guys in this video. Let me know in the comment section below if you guys found this helpful. If you have any questions at all, please hit me up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Like I said earlier, it does help the channel so very much. And if you found this video helpful, I've got lots more other videos coming out. So definitely consider doing that. But that's all I've got for you guys. Thank you so very much for watching. And I'll talk to you guys again real soon.